सर्वदर्म परित्याज मामे कम शरण हम तुम सर्वपापेज सर्वधर्म वराइटीज ऑफ रिलीजन परित्याज Please repeat, abandon all varieties of religion, all of religion. and just surrender on to me. I should deliver you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. So far, the Lord has described various kinds of knowledge and processes of religion, knowledge of the Supreme Brahman, knowledge of the Super Soul, knowledge of the different types of orders and stages of social life, knowledge of the renowned thought of life, knowledge of non-attachment, sense and mind control, meditation, etc. He has described in so many ways different types of religion. Now, in a summarizing Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says that Arjuna should give up all the process that have been explained to him. He should simply surrender to Krishna. That surrender will save him from all kinds of sinful reactions, for the Lord personally promises to protect him. In the seventh chapter, it is said that only one who has become free from all sinful reactions can take to the worship of Lord Krishna. Thus, one may think that unless he is free from all sinful reactions, he cannot take to the surrendering process. To such doubt from it is here said that even if one is not free from all sinful reaction, simply by the process of surrendering to Sri Krishna he is automatically free. There is no need of strenuous effort to free oneself from sinful reaction. One should unhesitatingly accept Krishna the Supreme, Savior of all living entities with faith and love, one should surrender unto him. The process of surrender to Krishna is described in the Hari Bhakti Vilas. Anukulayasya Sankalpa Pratikulasya Varjanam Rakshayatiti Vishwaso Gopatretva Varanam Tata Atmane Chepa Karipanye Karpanye Sarvida Sharanam Gati. According to the devotional process, one should simply accept such religious principles that will lead ultimately to devotional service of the Lord. One may perform a particular occupational duty according to his position in the social order, but if by executing his own duty, one does not come to the point of Krishna consciousness, all his activities are in vain. Anything that does not lead to the professional state of Krishna consciousness should be avoided. One should be confident that in all circumstances Krishna will protect him from all difficulties. There is no need of thinking how one should keep the body and soul together. Krishna will see to that. One should always think himself helpless and should consider Krishna the only basis for his progress in life. As soon as one seriously engages himself in devotional service to the Lord in full Krishna consciousness, at once he becomes free from all contamination of his own nature. There are different processes of religion and purificatory processes by cultivation of knowledge, meditation in the mystic yoga system, etc. But one who surrenders unto Krishna does not have to execute so many methods. That simple surrender to Krishna will save him from unnecessarily wasting time. 
One can thus make all progress at once and be free from all sinful reactions. One should be attracted by the beautiful vision of Krishna. His name is Krishna because he is all attracted. One who becomes attracted by the beautiful, all-powerful, omnipotent vision of Krishna is fortunate. There are different kinds of transcendentalists. Some of them are attached to the impersonal Brahman vision. Some of them are attracted by the super soul feature, etc. But one who is attracted to the personal feature of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and above all, one who is attracted by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, as Krishna himself, is the most perfect transcendentalist. In other words, devotional service to Krishna and full consciousness is the most confidential part of knowledge. And this is the essence of the whole Bhagavad Gita. Karma yogis, empiric philosophers, mystics and devotees are all called transcendentalists. But for one who is a pure devotee is the best of all. The particular word, you share, Mahasuchaha, don't fear, don't hesitate, don't worry, are very significant. One may be perplexed as to how one can give up all kinds of religious forms and simply surrender to Krishna, but such worry is useless. So back to the verse again. Abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me, I shall deliver you from all sinful reaction, do not fear. So here, Krishna is giving two valuable instructions in the Bhagavad Gita, and this is one of the uh, most important verses in the Bhagavad Gita. Surrendering completely to Krishna, uh, abandon all varieties of religion. So what is this? Varieties of religion. Everybody has got some concocted idea of worship, is it not? If you ask anybody, each one will tell something, something, something. Yes? I remember in my early days, before I became a devotee, I was a bit perplexed. So how does this worship is going on? <laughs> I, was, I was confused. You know? So I asked one so-called, one guy who used to go in trance, you know? I asked him, how? So no, no, you go to the temple, you pay respect to everybody, and who you like, you sit down there and you meditate. That was his, uh, you know, explanation. Because there are 330 million, uh, 33 million of them. Right. And you may go around, you sit down and meditate, and when you meditate, the so many things else comes in the mind, is it not? Correct? How is it possible? Some of South Indian deities, huh, they are all black. Huh? Have you seen the South Indian temple? They are all black. You can't see nothing. Don't know. Everyone looks same and they say they have one different name. Have you seen that? They say this is so and so, this is so and so, but they look all alike. So how to meditate? Yes. Is it not? Huh? So that's a difficult. So actually, uh, if you want to know how to do it, then we have to consult an authority. That's the first thing. Because to learn anything, we need an authority. Or put it in short, we need a guru. Because without the help of an authority, guru, we won't know how to surrender. Because surrender can be according to my terms. Yes, can be your terms. So many buddhist terms. Yes. Correct? For you, you may say, what? Uh, like you go to the Christian, they say, wow, eating beef is okay. Correct? Think pork is okay. Then you go to the Muslim, they say, no, no pork, haram, yes, yes. And you go to the Hindu guy, hey, no beef, huh? no, no beef. So who is right? Everybody is praying to God. Yes, yes or not? So you say you are right, he say he's right, he say, suppose I am listening to everybody, what do you all say? Everybody is right? <laughs> Isn't that confusing? Correct? So who is that authority? That we have to define. Because without first understanding the authority thing, then it's a confusion. Yes? What's the word? Tarko Pratishtha. So I'm going to explain to you this verse is from the Mahabharata. Okay, anything we tell you, we must back up. You understand? 
otherwise you will think I am speaking based on my authority. That is going to be useless also. Right? So here in this verse, Tarko Prabhista Sutra Nabhinam Seventeen? One eight. One eight six. One eight six. So in this verse, you all can chant, it's very nice. Tarko Pratista Sutayo Vibhinam Nasa Vrishi Yasya Matam Nabhinam Dharma Ashatatvam Nihitam Guhayam Mahajano Yena Gataha Sapanga So now here the translation Chaitanya Mahabharu continue. Dry arguments are inconclusive. Yeah. You can say something, I can say something, go on and forth and forth and I never end. Yes? Dry argument, correct? Uh, you say no, beef is okay, you say pork is okay, I mean, yes? Argument. Practically everybody is arguing, yes? So Chaitanya Mahabhu, he said, this is a verse from the Mahabharu. This argument, tarka, tarka means argument, is useless. Are you following? You are useless. A great personality whose opinion does not differ from others is considered, is not considered a great shape. It's again another big problem. If you are suppose big sadhu, Right? And someone else is another sadhu. If you say the same thing, then both go to well. You understand? He must be different, he must be different. Then, yeah, I'm also a big sadhu. I, <laughs> you understand? So, opinion must be different. But if you have difference of opinion, then you have difference of parts. Yes, it is not conclusive. Yes or no? Correct? Again, it is not. Does not sound good. Then he said, simply by studying the Vedas, which are variegated, one cannot come to the right path, which religious principles are understood. Yes. In fact, Krishna has said uh, to Arjuna, go above the Vedas. Trigunya, Vishaya Veda, Naishrugunya Bhavarjuna. What is that? I will come back to this. What is that? Here, yeah, Arjuna is told, Trigunya, Trigunya Vishaya Veda, you see the word here, Trigunya and Vishaya Veda, the very important words, you know. Nice Trigunya Baba Arjuna, Nirdvando Nitya Sattvasto, Nir Yoga Chema, Atma Van, translation. The Vedas deal mainly with the subject of the three modes of the true nature, O Arjuna, become transcendental to these three modes. Be free from all qualities and from all anxieties for gain and safety. And be established in the self. In other words, our Krishna is telling Arjuna to go what? Above the Vedas. Because the Vedas are always telling you about many karmakanda things. Do this fire sacrifice, do this, do that, do this, do this, and you go here, go there. You understand? So Arjuna has been told, you reject this Veda. Are you following? Huh? But then what? You reject the Vedas, then how? Vedas are Shakshat, Bhagavad Pranitaha, the word of God. The how is he telling him to be? What? Contradictory, correct? Then what else is he saying? Huh? One cannot come to the right path which religious principles understood. The solid truth of religious principle, this is the answer. The solid truth of religious principle is hidden in the heart of an unadulterated self-realized person. Now, this makes sense. Now, what does it mean? That the, the, the purpose of the Vedic knowledge or the purpose of spiritual life, the secret is hidden in the heart of a unadulterated. What is unadulterated? Milk mixed with water. In there, this is common, correct? Milk, milk means you know, adulterated, correct? Yeah. Unadulterated means this yogi is not mixed up, okay? 
Self-realized person, that means he must be also a self-realized person, correct? Ah. Consequently, as the Shastra confirmed, one should accept whatever progressive path the Mahajanas advocate. Now there's another term here, self-realized person, a new word, Mahajan. What does this Mahajan mean? Maha means what? Maha means what? Great. Yes. Maha mantra. Correct? Mahatmya. Maha. Maha means big. Something. And Jana means what? Huh? Soul. Great soul. A Mahatma. Yes? So in other words, the consequently the Satras confirm one should accept whatever progressive path the Mahajans advocate. Now, who is this Mahajan? You Mahajan? You Mahajan? You Mahajan? You Mahajan? You Mahajan? So, who, who is this Mahajan? Somebody has got a lot of money. He said money is a Mahajan. I'm asking someone who got money is Mahajan. Nowadays. Is that a fact? Nowadays. Nowadays, Nowadays huh? Mahajan is what? Here. Yeah. That, 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 that Prabhu. Who? Who is that Prabhu? The flower? Huh? The fly? Uh, who? You read not the name? Who? Huh? Okay, now I can debate that. I can, de we are putting him here and we are saying, yes, you may not accept. He may not accept. May not accept. Yes, not everybody. Correct? So how to come to this conclusion. The little question. Yes? So how you qualify a Mahajan? So we again we have to refer. Yes? Who are these Mahajan? Yes? Because you don't know, I don't know, I can say my grandfather. Why? You know, every day I see him in the prayer hall, you know, he was praying and ringing bell. I can say he's a Mahajan? Yes? Huh? I can say, oh, my mother, she's a Mahajan. Why? She cooked very well. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a very ambiguous statement. Yes? So how do we come to the conclusion of this? What is the word? 6-3? Six, 6-3? Three. Six, three. So here, this word, this is spoken by, I must tell you who spoke this, no? This is spoken by, who? Lord Shiva. How you know? This is spoken by Yamaraj. Spoken by who? Yamaraj. Who? Your grandfather? Who is Yamaraj? Your grandmother. Then who? Yes. He is in charge, the demigod in charge of taking you to a special place. <laughs> Right? I hope you don't want to see him, right? You want to see him? You want? Alright, good. So Yamaraj is speaking. Swayambhu Narada Sambho. Can you chant? Swayambhu Narada Sambho. Kumaraha Kapilo Manuhu. Pralada Janako Bhishmo. Bali Bayasaki Bayam. Right? Now, the other verse, this one is actually the meaning of that. Dvadasate vijjane mo dharmam bhagavatam vataha guhyam vishuddham dhurbodham yam gyantva murtam asnute. Translation Lord Brahma, Bhagavan Narada, Lord Shiva, the four Kumaras, Lord Kapila, the son of Deva, Devavuti, Swayambhu Manu, Swayambhuva Manu, Prahalat Maharaj, Janaka Maharaj, Grandfather Bhishma. I'm sure you know, right? You must have watched the Mahabharata a million times, yeah? Yes? Bhishma has got what? Is what? He's only driving his what? He dies when he wants to. He dies when he wants to. Oh, he dies when he wants to. Actually, Bishma Dev has got long what? 
white beard, he's very old. And then Bali Maharaj, Sukadev Goswami, and I myself know the real religious principle. You understand this point? In other words, he has qualified this Mahajan. Who are these Mahajans? Is your name there? They missed it out. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> is your name there? No. This clearly it what? Delineated. Who is who? Yes. Correct? So Lord Brahma, Bhagavan Narada, Lord Shiva, four Kumara, Kapila. In other words, there are only twelve Mahajans. You understand? So these twelve Mahajans, they know the secret of this religious principle. You may say one thing, he may say one thing, everybody may say, but one they say. See the translation. My dear servant, this transcendental religious principle which is known as Bhagavad Dharma or surrender unto the Supreme Lord and love for him is uncontaminated by material modes of nature. It's very confidential and difficult for ordinary human being to understand. But if by chance one fortunately understands it, he is immediately liberated and thus he returns home back to God. You understand now? So again, we will go through this. It is very confidential and difficult for ordinary human being to understand. It's a fact. You ask anybody on the road, they will tell you ten different things. Yes? Because they don't know. Yes or no? Huh? But if by chance one fortunately understands it, he is immediately liberated. And thus he returns home back to Godhead. So how does he by chance, fortunately he understands it? How does that work? How does that work? How? That he may fortunately contact this Mahaja. Yes? Logical, is it not? Yes, person who understands it and the person don't understand it. If a person wants to understand it, he has to go to the person who understands it. This is common sense. Yes? So how are we going to connect ourselves to such Mahaja? I don't think you've got any direct line to Lord Brahma, have you got? What about Lord Shiva? You have some. You said Lord, Lord Shiva just now. You be like you have some phone call with him. Hotline. Uh, hotline. You have. So when Narada, he's always with the, with the what? Vina. You you hear his music every day. You, you, every day you you hearing what? You hear Narada Muni Bajan. Yes. No. So who else you have connection with? Tell me. Who else you have connection with? Huh? What about the four Kumaras? You don't know who they are, I'm sure. <laughs> what about Kapila? Oh yeah, Kapila, the cricket guy, you have connection, right? Huh? Indian cricket guy, right? He's a big uh, Kapila, what? Kapila Deva. Kapila Deva, yeah, is that the guy? Huh? Wrong person. Yeah, the son of Devuti. Is that guy son of Devuti? Oh, he's also. So what about Swayambhu Manu? You don't even know who he is. Huh? He wrote some newspaper? No, Manu Smriti. Yes, Swayam Guru Manu is the one who wrote the Manu Samhita. What about Prahlad Maharaj? Do you have any connection with him? No. no. So, Janaka, Janaka Maharaj is the father of Sita. Do you have any connection with him? No. Grandfather Bhishma. Just now you said no. He chose to die when he gone. You have any dealing with him? No. Bali Maharaj, Sukadev Gosha, practically you have no connection with anyone here. So how are we going to understand the true religious principle? You give me a suggestion now. How to find it? Through their disciples. He's giving some good hint. Through their disciples. Who are the disciples? How to find them? Parampara. Where is the parampara? Everyone would say he is for his own parampara. Especially India, there are many, many parampara. Yes? Yes? So how they solve this problem? Tell me now. Uh, go to Bollywood. Go to a bona fide guru. Who is that? Prabhupada. Why? Because he's here. 
Why? Because he's here. Now you go to another place, you say, that is one of them. What is that guy? The one in Bombay got arrested. Ah, he's also one of them? <laughs> <laughs> ah, Alibaba, yes. <laughs> So who is bona fide? That's the question now again. How do we authenticate that? You say parampara, parampara, parampara. What is that? How do you authenticate that? Huh? That you have to first find out the lineage. Parampara means the lineage. So the person who actually says he is a guru, he must come connection with any of these twelve Personalities. You understand? If any one of them have a connection with these twelve personalities, and if they are coming down an unbroken, unbroken chain, and he does not change also the philosophy, then he is a bona fide candidate. Are you following? So I'm going to show you the line that Prabhupada is coming from. Let us go to that. Let me do that. Huh? Right here, very important now, you have to watch. Now we just read this now, there are 12 Mahajan. Yes, there was Lord Brahma's name mentioned. Yes, and there was Narada Muni's men mentioned. Yes, so here Krishna is the originator of all the parampara. You understand why? Because Krishna spoke this Veda to the heart of Vedas are coming, before I go to this, I have to show you why Krishna's name is the source. I have to show you. So here, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is saying, you see this? I am the compiler and know of the Vedanta. By all Vedas, I am to be known. In other words, what is being transmitted is the sound vibration from the Lord to Brahma. You understand? You understand this one? And Lord Brahma is sharing this Vedic vibration. You understand? I want to take that verse out. That after reading three times, you know, with my four heads. Huh? Two, 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 thirty four. I want to show you, very important, because first I have to establish that Krishna is the originator of this line. Now, I want to show you what Brahma is saying. Two, two, thirty-four. Two, thirty-four. Thirty-four. Now, here, Lord Brahma, I have heard it. I have Sanskrit, huh? Brahma, Bhagavan Brahma Krasne, 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 na? Three Anvicha. Manishya Tat Advasya Kutosto Rati Atman Yato Bhavet. Is this the word? The great personality, Brahma, with great attention and concentration of mind, studied the Vedas three times. Amina? And after scrutinizingly examining them, he has certain that attraction for the Supreme Personality of God is Sri Krishna is the highest perfection of religion. So this is not some blind thing. We are not just putting you Krishna. We are explaining you why Krishna because he is the source of all, everything, correct? He is the source of both material world, spiritual world, every world. You understand? And he is now teaching this knowledge to Brahma. And when Brahma got it, he did not just blindly accept it. He says here, how many times Brahma got how many heads? Three heads. Four heads. And four heads he studied three times. And that also with great attention and concentration. He did not just... Concentration of his what? Mind. Understand? And then he scrutinizingly examined them also. Correct? Then he has certained. What he has certained? The Supreme Personality of Godhead Sri Krishna is the highest perfection of 
today. So we cannot doubt the authenticity of Krishna being the supreme personality of accepted, accepted or not. All right, now we go back to this. Here, then Krishna is passing down the knowledge to Lord Brahma. And then Lord Brahma is passing on to who? Narada. You understand this? And Narada is passing down to who? Who is Vyasa? Who? Vyasa Dev is the incarnation of Krishna. Literal incarnation. He wrote all the Vedic books, everything A to Z. Understand? He wrote everything. You follow? Everything. There is the Puranas, there is the Itihasas, the history, then the Shrutis and the Smritis. Everything he wrote. You understand? You follow? I don't want to go into that. There's so many piles of information. Which slope, which book, which book, which slope, how many slope, the whole detail is out there. But I, I don't have time for that. I'll go down. Now, Madhava. Who is this Madhava? Madhva Acharya. Madhva Acharya is our Acharya in our line. Understand? Then his disciple, Patmanabha, Narahari, Madhva, Ashokbya, Jayatirtha, Jnana Sindhu, Dayanidhi, Vidyanidhi, Rajendra, Jayadharma, Purushottama, Brahmanya Tirtha, Vyasa Tirtha, Lakshmipati, Madhavendra Puri. This Madhavendra Puri, uh, from him, there is Ishwara Puri. And then Nityananda Prabhu here, standing here, you see, Advaita Acharya also there. Huh? And Lord Chaitanya, who is Lord Chaitanya? He has taken the initiation in this line. And then Rupa, Swarup, Sanatan, all the Goswamis, Raghunath, Jiva, Krishnadar, Narottam, Vishwanath, Baladev, Jagannath, Bhakti Vinod, Gaurkishore, Bhakti Siddhanta, and finally who? So you think that Prabhupada is authorized or not? What? Yes. Do you think that Prabhupada is one of the Mahajan? Yes or not? Yes. What? So now I have established that you have to go to the right person to hear the right thing so that you get? Yes. Why you have to do this? I have explained. In the Bhagavadam it is explained here. I have quoted this verse many times. Anadi avidya yuktasya purushashi atma vedanam svatona sambhavanan yas tattvato gya agya tattvato gya jnanam do bhavet. Because a person who has been covered by ignorance since time immemorial is not capable of affecting his own self realization. There must be some other personality with in factual knowledge of the absolute truth that can impart this knowledge to him. <coughs> you understand this? Are you following? So in other words, we want to surrender, as Krishna said, abandon all varieties of religion and surrender unto me. That surrendering unto me cannot take place directly to Krishna. It is not possible. Because you and Krishna are miles apart. Yes or no? So you need that parampara. You need the disciplined chain to have the spiritual master to connect you to. You understand? This thing is very important. If this connection is not there, then the knowledge will not come to us. Why? I have to explain to you. In this verse, In this verse in the Bhagavad Gita, you can chant with me. My connection is gone. What happened? This is the problem. Always there's some breakdown. What? What about the the internet? 
the the light thing is going? Is it connected? The light connected? Light is on. Tesham satata yukta nam Pajantam pretty bulwakam Dadami diogam tam Yehamam upayam ite So those who constantly devote to serving me with love, I give them understanding by which they can come to me. Yes? You understand this point? So how does Krishna give the understanding? He's sitting in your heart. You follow this point. He's sitting in the and is giving instruction. But sometimes, most of the time, we cannot understand that. That's why he says here, O oh my Lord, transcendental poets and experts in spiritual science could not fully express their indebtedness to you. Even if they are endowed with the prolonged lifetime of Brahman, for you appear in two features, externally as the Acharya and internally as the Super Soul, to deliver the embodied living being by directing him how to come to you. You understand this point? So you cannot do it like many Indians are thinking all the time, no, no, I am direct, I like this direct. What? Takkal. <laughs> huh? Yes? Takkal, no? Direct. <laughs> you understand? But it is not possible. You cannot go to God directly. That is not possible. It is not possible. Krishna himself said, what is that word? I will, I will come back to this again. I'll show you. What is that? No, no. One who says, my devotee. Matya, 11. ये में भक्त जन पार्त ना में भक्त च ते जन मात भक्ता नम च ए भक्त ते में भक्त तम मत कृष्णा इज सेइंग टू अर्जुन लॉर्ड कृष्णा टोल अर्जुन दोस हु आर माय डायरेक्ट डिवोटी आई एक्चुअली नॉट माय डिवोटी यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस क्लियरली यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस क्लियरली सो यू मे क्लेम नो 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 you do not know, you know, what Krishna is my heart. You can say, but Krishna says, no, no. Understand? What is that? Krishna doesn't want to see you. You understand? That is a problem. Sometimes when people come to us and say, you do not know, Prabhu, I am talking to Krishna. Oh. I am 50 years, I can't even do that. You, I just come yesterday, you are talking to Krishna. Wow, this is something wild. And then we know actually there's something wrong with this person. <laughs> Immediately we analyze. Yes? Yes or no? Because here Krishna is saying, I don't see the person. And you are saying you are talking. That means you are talking to who? Somebody I don't know. <laughs> Yes or not? Yes or not? This has to be understood. They cannot speculate. You understand? So, but those who are devotees of my devotees, uh, those who are devotees of my servant, are factually my devotees. Understand? Those who are my direct devotees are actually not my devotees. But those who are devotees of my servant are factually my What's the family? 
What is your name on thing? Huh? Huh? All right. So I made my point. That means you cannot at all go to God, Krishna directly. Cannot. You have to go through His servant. You understand? You follow my point? And a servant means who? Again, question mark. Who is that servant? Who? You. You. Huh? The servant means somebody that Krishna will direct you to him. It is not you take your, your, your torch light, but now everybody will torch light. Hmm? Oh, you want. Okay, okay, okay. There's no such thing. Don't jump. Don't jump. Don't jump. Listen to the class. Listen to the class. Okay. You understand now? We have to go to a servant. And a servant means who? A servant means one who is in the discipline succession. You understand this? Is it clear? Understand? You follow? So we have to go to a servant of Krishna who is Mahajan, who is coming down in that line and that person is what Krishna says you must go. Okay. Are you following this point? And after you go to him, then there is a process. Not that I go to him. Oh, okay, how do you do? This doesn't work like that. You understand? Krishna has clearly, clearly, clearly delineated what, how you must go to such a person. You not go to him and have a cup of coffee. Spiritual mother in Chakra. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is not this is not the person. It is explained here. Krishna is clearly telling what you have to do. Huh? He says here Tatviti Pranipatena Pari Prasnena Sevaya Upadekshanti Tegyanam Jnani Nastatva Darushina So very important that three words Pranipatena You see that word? Pranipatena Then Pariprasmena Yes and Seva Three things are there, yes So in what is the meaning of this Pranipata, Pariprasna and Seva? What does that mean? That means when you go to such a self-realized So these are the three things you have to do One Pranipata means you have to approach the spiritual master and pranipata. Pranipata means what? What? Surrender. Pranipata means what? Surrender. You understand? Surrender means what? That you are prepared to accept his. Understand? Let me give you a little bit more breakdown on that. What is that? Brahmachari Guru Kale, Tanto Nistam Guru Hitam, what is that? Huh? Here, this is described what you should do, how you should do. Narada Muni, again, who is speaking? Who is Narada Muni? Mahajan, yes. A student should practice completely controlling his senses. He should be submissive and should have an attitude of firm friendship with the spiritual master. With the great vow, the brahmachari should live in the gurukul only for the benefit of the guru. That's a surrender. Not to go there and what? discuss terms. You understand? No, no, my guru Maharaj, you, I cannot do this. What? No, 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 the guru, the Lama, you don't do, you give me money enough. Huh? Understand? There is only for the. In fact, there's another word. Time is running short. That you must sacrifice everything you got for only to the. Whatever you got, you have to give to the. Because we put this condition, nobody will come back next Sunday for sure. 
What? Already you're going. Okay, go. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes there must some, be some humor, otherwise philosophy is very difficult to digest. <laughs> Alright, so now you understand. Huh? You have to live with a guru like that. We'll go back to that verse again. Okay, surrender. And submissive inquiry, pariprasnena means what? Submissive, not challenging. Not what? Especially our Hindu man, who oh, are you expert? Challenge. Why this? Why that? Why that? After we explain, still no, I don't want to take it. You understand this? They cannot be that moved. If you really want to make spiritual advancement, this is the first condition. Surrender. But you can say, I can surrender blindly. No. When you have understood that this is an authority, then you must surrender. Because you cannot get knowledge at gunpoint. Can you do that? Can I put a gun on my head and please Prabhu, you tell me now. Speak up. Can? Can? This is nonsense. Understand? It has to come voluntarily. And you have to only can get that if you please the authority. Otherwise, it's not possible. Understand? So this challenging mood has to be what? Of course, we have said doubt. We are not saying you cannot. You may have doubt. That's clear. But doubts must approach a responsible person and you must clear that doubt. Understand? And there are process of doing it. You follow? And then after you got your answer, you go home. After you have the answer, you go home, thank you very much. Is it? Huh? Yes, yes, I learned from you. Ah, yes, I understood. Now I go home. And go home now. Take care of my wife. Yes? Yes? And the other guru. Who? Who's my other guru? <laughs> I have got two Guru Prabhu. One Guru is here, another Guru is where? What? You understand? This is not the way. You have to surrender and then do what? Service! You have to what? There's two words in our Sampradaya, our line. We have two words. One is called Puja. Another one is called Say. But here, we don't use the word Puja. Why? Because puja means you are flattering. Like you do devata puja. What? You are flattering the devatas to get what? But you cannot do that with Krishna. With Krishna there is only one thing. With a guru there is only one thing. What is that? You cannot flatter the guru. That's not possible. Yes, you cannot bribe him. That's not possible. You can only do what? Seva. Seva. So the word seva, devotional service. Devotional what? Puja. Or devotional service. Which is which? Is devotional service. So therefore, service is very important. Service means unconditioned. If the Guru says no prasadam, you have to fast, you have to fast. You understand? That is the scripture. You cannot change this thing. Therefore, you have to learn how to live in a menial way, only for the satisfaction of the Guru. And when you do that, then what happens? What is that? What happens? The here. Yesha Deve Para Bhakti Yata Deve Tata Guru Asa Iti Kadita Hai Harta Prakasham Te Mahatmanura Only unto those great souls who have implicit faith in both the Lord and the spiritual master of all the import of the Vedic knowledge automatically revealed. You understand this point? You understand this point? Are you understanding this point? Is it clear? So in other words, it is not by book study or big austerity 
or this or that. You understand? You can only get success if you have implicit faith in who? 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 Spiritual master and? Understand? And that means what? How you show your implicit faith? Huh? Sitting at home, turning. Prabhu, I have implicit faith, Prabhu. Well, how you show? How? How? Surrendering to the desires of the spiritual master. This is why surrender is not something that you say. It is action. And you come to the temple, somebody tell you to do something. No, Prabhu, I have got this, I have got that, I have got so many things. That means what surrender is that? You understand? It is not that the devotees are telling you. It's Krishna is making the arrangement. You follow? And you are put on the spot. Just like Arjuna, he was put on the spot. He said, I am surrendering, I love you, I love you, alright, you love me. Now you kill your grandfather. Of course, if Krishna asks you to do that, you will have probably given faith, I've given up Krishna long ago. You understand? You see how Krishna has put his pure devotees to severe tests. Understand? Here we ask you to sweep the floor. Prabhu, can I bring my mate here? Huh? We are sweeping. Oh, no, Prabhu, I will bring my mate. You know, she is good at this. You understand? So surrender means that whatever is told, I, I do. That is to show you don't have any false ego. You understand that? I am trying to tell you what surrender is all about. Of course, the different categories of surrender. Some can surrender their words, some can surrender their intelligence, some can surrender their money, some can surrender their life. Different categories. Right? Each has got it, its different benefits. But real thing is that you have to give your un, what? adulterated, unconditional service. That's uh, explained here. Unflinching faith in Guru and Krishna. Then, yes. That's what Krishna is saying. When you come to that category, then yes, you don't have any more fear. You are not frightened. You understand? It is explained here. You know, all this contamination. Material world means fear. Material world means what? Huh? Four ten, is it? Yeah. Yeah, you see in this verse? Vitaraga Baya Kroda Manmaya Mamu Pasita Avagyan Tapasha Uta Madhava Magata Been freed from attachment, fear and anger, been fully absorbed in me and taking refuge in me. See that? That is surrender. That is what? Surrender. So when you surrender, these are the side effects. First thing is that you become free from your material attachment. And then you become free from fear and anger. And not only that, Krishna is not only just saying that. Many, many persons in the past became purified by knowledge, me and thus they all attain transcendental love. In other words, if you do or don't do, many people have done it and got it proven. Just like you go to the shop. Uh, how, how many people bought this? Huh? Oh, many people are going, oh, it's very popular. Then you go and pop Is it not? Is it not? If there's a popularity, then you go and purchase it, right? For example, this what? The Apple phone. Wow, very popular. All stay overnight, queue, buying. Yes? 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 Best buy. Yes? Yes or no? Yes? Yes or no? Yes. Right? In fact, I see nowadays to buy a product, there's an opinion. Review. Review. Yes? <coughs> so Krishna is also giving his review here. <laughs> Krishna is what? Giving the review here. Yeah. So many, many persons in the past became purified by knowledge of me and thus they all attained transcendental love for me. In other words, they have gone home back to? You understand? So this process, Krishna is stressing one, that if you surrender, you become free from fear. I will, what? Take you from all sinful reaction. I will free you. From fear. Do not fear. Krishna said, right? Yes or no? So again, Krishna is showing here that many people have become free from this and many people have become home back to God. So you, whether you want to take it or not, that's your question now. Are you following? Are you following? Now, let's go a little bit more to Arjuna. Right? Arjuna, what is saying? You see.
Arjuna is saying here, Arjuna Vacha Nasta Moham Smriti Lapta Tvat Prasadam Maya Chuta Sito Smegata Sandeha Karishye Vacha Nam Tava Here Krishna is saying, Arjuna is saying, Now Arjuna has surrendered. Now I am telling you this now the words, many many people have gone back. Yes, and they got free. Now what Arjuna is personally feeling, he is also saying, My dear Krishna, O infallible one, my illusion is now gone. So by taking out the surrendering process, not only he got free from attachment, he got free from fear, he got free from anger. Huh? He now got free from what? Illusion. Illusion means what? What does illusion mean? What does illusion mean? That I do not know what to do. That means illusion. Illusion means what? I don't know what to do, what not to do. I am disturbed. That's what Arjuna started. The whole Bhagavad Gita was started on that point. Was it not? Bhagavad Gita started on this point. Krishna, I do not know what to do. I am confused. That was the starting point. Now, by surrendering, he has now gone. His illusion is now Okay, now illusion is gone. In what way? I have regained my memory by your mercy. In other words, you have got his memory back. And I am now firm and free from doubt. And I am prepared to act according to your instruction. This is the underlying factor of surrender. Underlying factor of what? That means what? You act according to whose instruction? Not your instruction. You understand this point? In other words, if you are not willing to take instruction, if you are not, what is it? Finish, huh? If you are not, you are not free from doubt, if your illusion is not gone, that means your surrendering is not complete. Your surrendering is not? Then Prabhu, what, 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 how, how you determine I'm coming, I'm chanting, I'm, 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 I'm wow. how you, how you, how you strike the balance? Tell me, how? How you strike the balance? I'm also chanting, I'm praying, I've got my guru, my so many things, I've got, why? How, huh? Tell me. Tell me. What is it? 9, 12, 4, 12. Yes. Yeyata mam prapadyante tam tateva bajami ham mamavatman vartante Manusha Partha Sarvasha Or oh, as all surrender unto me, I reward them accordingly. Everyone follows my path in all respect, O son of Gita. So as you surrender, your reward is? If your surrender is 10%, then? You surrender with one banana, expect a rose rice. Krishna is such a fool. Huh? Yes? One oh, Prabhu, I brought one. Next time I'll bring ten bananas. Is it, is it possible? So you cannot think like that. This is another big illusion. Everyone thinks that I've surrendered Prabhu, I've surrendered. How much to surrender? That's another question, is it? Uh, how much to surrender? <laughs> Surrendering means there's no what? How much or how less or what? Surrender means what? Whether Krishna is yes or Krishna says no. You understand? Are you following? If Krishna says no, then he's sorry, mate. Yes. Yes or no? So we have to understand this. Surrender means unto his condition, his term. So we cannot demand. You understand? Sometimes I hear the word is Prabhu, I am surrendering. No, how much to surrender? No, surrendering and surrendering. What is this? I'm getting money problems. That means Krishna wants to get more problems. 
This is understanding. All right. I think I covered pretty much, I think. Did I miss anything out? <coughs> All right. The same words, the same word is spoken in many places, in many parts of the Bible. You understand? The same word is spoken in many places. In fact, we have to give up this thing and surrender only to Krishna. And the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna, Arjuna said also. Another word that Arjuna says that I have surrendered. This is how we have to surrender. Sarvam etatritam manye Yamam badasi kesava Nahete bhagavan yatim Vidu deva nadanava Very important this verse, you see. This is surrender. Ah, O oh Krishna, I totally accept as true all that you have told me. Finish. No more doubts. No more what? Neither the demigod nor the demons, oh Lord, can understand your, your Krishna. In other words, you go to the devatas and pray, or you go to some powerful man, or this or that, nobody can help you. Understand? Only one person. Who? The disciplic succession and the spiritual. That's why Arjuna put this word. Not the demons, not the demigods. In other words, you cannot go to Krishna through the path of the demigods. It's not possible. It is not possible. You understand this? I'll show you this word. You know what is that? Akama Sarvakama 1. Just before you go, 2, 3, 11. I am talking, huh? I am talking. All the different kinds of worshippers of multi demigods, are you watching that? Can attain the highest perfectional benediction, which is spontaneous attraction, unflinchingly fixed upon the Supreme Personality of God is only by the association of the pure devotee of the Lord. You understand this point? In other words, you cannot go to Krishna through the demigods. It's not possible. It is not. Can I read it again? Are you, are you doubtful? You want to see it again? Huh? All right, so then, all the different kinds of worshippers of multi demigod. Why the word multi is used? 330 million of them can attain the highest perfection of benediction. All those who worship demigod can attain highest perfection, which is spontaneous attraction, unflinchingly fixed upon the Supreme Personality of Godhead only by the association of the pure devotee of the you understand this? So don't don't come and tell us that no no I have got this Lord Shiva Ganesh or this or that. This is all not going to. Again, I have qualified myself why you have to go to a pure devotee and not anybody else but the pure devotee. In other words, this pure devotee, his position is also you have to understand this also. What is that? Acharya Chami Jani. 11, 17. Now the Acharya is not an ordinary person, right? Here, yeah. you say, Sarva Deva Mayo Guru. Hu. You see that line? Sarva Deva Mayo Guru. Hu. In other words, this authority, our spiritual master, yeah, he's thinking him as an ordinary man. He's not an ordinary man. For he is the representative of all the demigods. In other words, he is the representative of who? Naturally, because he is coming from an unbroken chain of who? Authority. Yes, and he is the authority means everybody must be 
So is it clear? Any questions? Yes. Prabhupada said they are just like political parties. Different sampradayas are like political parties, they have different agendas. But the goal is one to love God. Right? So, next question. Right, to answer this question, I mean, there's a verse there in 11. As long as one is materially contaminated and not coming to devotional service, then he has to practice all this yoga. You understand? I think it's in 11, 10. Let me just take it out. As long as one is contaminated So as long as one I gotta find that I'm gonna find now. As long as one is cut material desires, then these other paths are there for him. But if he is in Krishna consciousness, have taken up devotional service, then there is no need for him to do anything else. You follow this point? You understand me? So if you have got contaminated desire, you want some result through the work, then yes, karma yoga is there. If someone is interested in jnana, then yes, jnana yoga is there. Someone wants to become some kind of mystic yogi, then Yoga is there. But if someone has come to Krishna, then all these things are not right. One who has got the higher taste, then he gives up all this. What? Lower taste. You follow? Huh? I think it's in 1120. 1120, that speaks about the three yogas. Huh? Let me again look for it very quickly. Sometimes, you know, so many things to remember. Yes, okay. 11 20 17. All right, you see here, you're just trying to make this point. I was looking for this verse. Among these three paths, Jnana Yoga, the path of philosophical speculation, recommended for those who are disgusted in material life, and others detached from ordinary fruitive activities, those who are not disgusted with material life, having many des desires yet to fulfill, should seek perfection through the path of Karma Yoga. You understand? You follow? But, If somehow or other by good fortune one develops faith in hearing and chanting my glories, such a person be neither very disgusted nor with very much attached to material life should achieve perfection through the path of loving devotion to me. Finish. Very clear? 
All right. Anything else? Okay. Thank you very much. So I hope you understood what is surrender means. Surrender means. Now you understand. Eleven three. Eleven three twenty two. Accepting the bona fide spiritual master as one's life and soul, worshipful deity, the disciple should learn from him the process of pure devotion service. The Supreme Personality of God is Hari, the soul of all souls, is inclined to give himself to his pure devotee. Therefore, the disciple should learn from the spiritual master to serve the Lord with our duplicity and such faithful and favorable way that the Supreme Lord, being satisfied, will offer himself to the faithful disciple. Third conclusion, sir. All right. Thank you very much. Jai Nandraj Mat Bhagavatam Bhagavad Gita Ki. Oh, Premanandish.